I was raised in Fresno by a single mom. I ended up choosing to go to Fresno State and you know, honestly, I can say this, it was the best decision for me that I ever made. I was surrounded by people that were like me. So Fresno State, in many respects, was kind of like a warm bath. It wasn't like when I went to law school, which was more like a cold shower. I always say that if you want to find the biggest collection of dysfunctional people in any community, go to a law school. I remember after everybody talked about where they went to school, they asked me where I went to school, and I said, I went to Fresno State. and. I remember one of them said, uh, I think he went to Harvard or something. He said, they have a school there. Then after we got our midterm grades, that's when I said, yeah, I went to Fresno State. Um, how'd you do? Fresno State really set me on the course that stood me in good stead. I mean, the skills that I used as a lawyer, the skills I used as a judge, the skills that I use now as a writer, all of these things are generated by what I did when I was 19 years old, 20 years old. Of course, I didn't think about it that way then. I was a uh, felony trial lawyer fairly well in advance of the normal track. I ended up running for office and became a municipal court judge. And in 1985, Governor Duke Majan appointed me to the Superior Court. And from there, I went to the Fifth District Court of Appeal. I believe that government has a primary responsibility of creating a safe place for its constituents. In 1990, 91, crime was just rampant. Here in the community of Fresno, um, a young woman was murdered. She was the daughter of a, of a nurse and a wedding photographer here, Mike Reynolds. My mother was friends with the Reynoldses and uh, asked me to become involved. I, I really was not enthused about becoming involved, but my mother was insistent, and so I agreed to speak to them. And Mike asked me, if you could do one thing, what is it that you would do to reduce crime in California? So I wrote up the structure of what at that time became known as the Three Strikes Law. It was controversial, no question about it. You know, I look at it in terms of people who are alive today that have no concept that they're alive because of three strikes. I mean, at the time, 10 years later, I calculated it was like 10,000 people. I looked at that as a very positive, um, salutary thing, and I still do. When I became the administrative presiding justice, I realized that the Court of Appeal needed to create its own building. I came up with a design that used glass walls to the courtroom. I want you to be able to look through the glass windows and see the center seat of the highest court in Central California. And over the transom, I want it to say, equal justice under law. As a judge, you are entrusted with a degree of discretion and responsibility that frankly, very few human beings have. You have the power to take away a person's children, a person's home, a person's freedom, a person's life. I regard that as a great public trust. I was a judge for 30 years. I had the privilege of serving at every level of the judiciary, including the Supreme Court. It was the greatest honor that you could possibly have.